we he made that up. Okay, we guys, not we're, on we're on air. We're on air. Hello, guys. Paul's room, you guys, may have moved a little bit, but I was not part of it, and I didn't move anything in the room when I was in there. I know. We're just looking we'll, for our laptop. And all right, we'll, right. we'll have a we'll have a conference over that a little you know, later on. You're okay. Going, you're not locked in like this. Okay. Okay. Who cares? Well, we're 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 going yeah, on tapes if you start cussing at us. Yep, we have it all on YouTube. <laughs> Hello, guys. Welcome to the Big Cost Networking. We we left off on ports today. We guys, we really we really want to get a lot of stuff done. Okay, so get ready to write notes and get this stuff in. So you have your most common ports. You have FTP. That stands for File Transfer, right? FTP. Yep. Right. File Transfer Proto. Cool. Wow, this is really wobbly. They need a screw. I think if you guys give me a Phillips screwdriver later on, I can tighten the board because it's kind of loose. Like behind here, like, you know? It's screwed on very loose. I, I bet somebody did that. Like, you know, somebody trying to be mean to us. But file transfer protocol. And that's for um, file transfer. Basically, you know what that means, right? Don't need to go into the discussion. Just write that down in the common port. 20. 20 is the port that the, um, the data gets transferred over. 21 is the port that um, you connect to, you log in, it's basically the command port. You, you give commands to that FTP server. Okay? I don't know how well that's picking that up. Okay, there we go. You got 22, that's SSH. Connor, do you remember what SSH was? Forget it. Well, SSH stands for Secure Shell. And basically that's how you... Um, that's how you get remote control over a server or a computer, okay? Basically, you have, in Linux, you have a terminal. Now, I'm going to show you, for example. Everybody knows what command prompt looks like, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't like this crap popping up on me. You have your command prompt, okay? You would, you would call that... a blue marker if you click on it. Basically, this would be the terminal for Windows, right? Okay? Okay? In Linux, you have a similar thing, except it's a lot different. So, what SSH does is it, it allows you to remotely control a computer or a server via something like that, command point. Make sense? Kind of? Okay, good. So, get that down, if you don't already. Okay? So you have tw port 22 is the most common, and when securing these, you don't want to have, when you set up your SSH server, basically, you know, remote control your computer or whatnot, you don't want to have port 22. Why is that? Because it's the most common. It's the default. And you get the default, say I have port scan Connor's computer, I see 22, and it says SSH. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to want to, I'm going to try to want to hack that. See, now if you change the port to something higher, say... I hate you. Say 8924. That's a much higher port. It's going to take me time to see that. And plus, you know, it's not the most common. We're not going to know what that is when we port scan. It'll just say 8924 status open, you know? So, when securing something, especially the SSH, don't use port 22. And guess what? This school, if you um, in map, that means basically scan, scan their network. It says port 22 open, SSH server. So, is that pretty secure, Connor? Probably not, huh? So you got port 22. Then you have 23, which is Telnet. If I know what Telnet is. Actually, if I go into my computer, you see I got a lot of stuff on here, don't I? I might want to put this marker down because it's being a Donkey Kong. Okay. I have Putty. Putty is an is an SSH client. Okay. So, do you guys know something? You have your default port 22 showing up right there, huh? So you don't have to automatically type it in. You'll put in the IP, the 10.1.2.52 or something, you know, whatever your IP is. You connect. Now you also see. Telnet right there. You see SSH, but you also see Telnet. Telnet is basically like a raw connection. It's, it's, not, it's similar to SSH, but it's like a raw connection that you can actually actually communicate with that port. 
It's, um, I've, I've used Telnet. Telnet is most common in Cisco routers, if you want to put that down. Telnet equals Cisco routers. And going into security, a lot of people have um, Cisco routers on their network, and they all have the default password plus their public. So what, what, what does that tell you? That means insecure. That means somebody like me that's smart could connect to that IP address, go to connect to it via Telnet, and have access to your whole network. Cisco what? Cisco routers. Uh, use Telnet a lot. Um, you know, default. They have a default password. The default pass password is Cisco. So if you know a, an IP address, a, a public IP address of a Cisco router, you can just go into it, do what you want with it, control that entire network. And also... Um, DDoS from that network. I can get into that later. But yeah, you have Telnet. Okay? There's Putty. And I don't want SSH into anything right now because I'm on the school's network and somebody like Nate will probably walk in and be like, what the hell are you doing, you know? Hmm. Yeah, plus more, you know. Yeah. Okay? So you also have Telnet, which is unencrypted text communications. Basically, that Telnet is not encrypted at all. Um, if I was going to pack a sniff, you know, be a man in the middle attack, I could see what commands you're executing to that server over the internet. Um, SSH is um, encrypted. Now this is something I like to do. I like the SSH tunnel. So say I run, I do run an SSH server at my house. Say I SSH into that, and I set up SSH tunneling, okay? That means everything that I, um, any website I go to on that, on that computer right there, goes through my internet at my house. So, basically, I can avoid the web filters. <laughs> you guys are like, wow. Because it all gets tunneled through that SSH server at my house. That's SSH tunneling. Okay? You also have SMTP. Who's heard of SMTP? I bet you've seen it on the test, haven't you? IMAP SMTP. Basically, that's simple mail transfer protocol. SMTP is for sending mail, okay? Outbound. You also have inbound. Inbound would be POP3 or IMAP. IMAP is kind of like exchange. It's like both ways, okay? So SMTP usually runs off port 25. Now, I have a Linux server at my house, you know, a VM running. And there's this program on Linux called SendMail that uses SMTP. Now, most ISPs block port 25. Why is that? They want to pre prevent spam, okay? Because you know all that spam emails you get? Well, that could be somebody in their computer is infected and they're running an SMTP server that people can spam from and try to make money off of. Okay? So that's how SMTP works, okay? I got uh, like an off subject question. Do you like practice this at home? Oh, I, I've ran many servers and I just, I know, I know this stuff, okay? So SMTP is sending mail outbound. So on my um, home server, I'll run. You can write this down. Send mail is really popular on Linux. And if you actually go in Gmail in the message, you click View Original. You can actually see the IP address that it was sent from. Not, and then if you're like sent from Gmail, I'll show a Google server. But if you're if you, you you're, you're using a server or something, and it's using your internet. It's gonna show your guys' IP address. So. It's not fun. It's not really funny to um, the spam from your a send mail from your own server because basically they got your IP and it's going to be blacklisted. It could be even reported. Okay, so there you got send mail and many um, email clients use SMTP. Google uses SMTP. It's a mail transfer protocol for email. Okay, so the, the default port's 25. Most ISPs block port 25. Mine doesn't. I, I like my ISP. They, they don't even monitor the bandwidth of the ports. <clears throat> I shouldn't say that on camera, but yeah. Comcast box port 25, um, that's that's outbound, so you can't send mail out through that port. Um, I even think Roadrunner does it, you know, a lot do it, to, to pre prevent spam. That's basically why they do that. But, yeah. You also have um, 53. Now, what's anybody heard of DNS, the domain name server? Mm -hmm. that's, where, that's where you put in the domain name and you get a response back. So let me show you guys this um, because I'm cool like that, okay? I'm showing you guys a lot of examples and a lot of them are in command prompt. So I go into CMD and I want to know the IP address of Yahoo. 
So NS lookup, that means name server lookup, okay? Basically, I'll use your DNS servers. Yahoo.com. You can't put HTTP, that's a protocol, that's not on domain. You just put Google.com. And then look, there's the IP addresses of Google, uh, of Google, okay? Did I say Yahoo, but I didn't look up Yahoo? You have, you have this address up there, right, right up there. See that address right there? That is not Google. What is that address? Your address. Get the heck out of I hate you. How do I remove this little banner thing? Drag it down somewhere else. You know, I, I, I think we need to update this software because it's a pain that you know what. Yeah. There we go. Okay. It's probably going to pop up again because it's like that. But this IP right here is the DNS server that your computer connected to to look up that domain name. So, if you look at it, 10, 58, 8, 7, what's that tell me? That tells me that the school is using one of their, using a, that means the school has their own DNS server or a server running um, Bind. Bind is a DNS server client you can run on your computer. But um, this tells me that when I look up Google.com, that, that request, that query, query means request, you know, you're requesting like Google.com, you're a DNS server, I'm, I'm the DNS client. This is a client, okay? So I'm going to say Google.com, you're going to return an IP address. Just say, just say a random number. Google.com. Just say something. Google, Yahoo.com. Thank you. See? So basically, okay? So this part here tells me that Nate or somebody can see our DNS queries. That means they can see any domain that we're trying to resolve. Now, when you go to, when you go to, when you go to Google, when you go to Google Chrome or your web browser or anything, type in a domain name, it has to resolve. And this is in the background. It will, in the background, it's resolving that. It's going to ask the DNS server, hey, what, what IP address does Google.com have? Okay? And the thing is, is Nate's running a buying server, or he's probably using Microsoft, um, the server, which is blah. But, but he's running a DNS server, which is probably the domain controller. And if you want to, you can go to, he can log it and see what computer looked up what domains. And when you're on when you're on your internet or anything, it has to look up to get an IP address to connect to that to connect, connect to that website. Okay, so that right there tells me the, the DNS server that was used. That's what DNS server was set up for. And this is uh, this is IP addresses for Google.com. See those? Those are some of the IP addresses. No, those will all route to um, Google's data centers, and it'll go off to the server to get the file. Make sense? So. That's basically that's basic DNS for you guys. Nothing, I don't, nothing too big, okay? Okay. So we have DNS, which runs on port 53. And then we have HTTP. What's that? That's websites. That's that's the protocol websites use, okay? The default port is 80, okay? Then you have um, Port 110, that's for POP3, that's for receiving email. So you guys write all this down? You guys are awesome. Then you have um, HTTPS. Now people say it's, it's secure. You want to know why it's secure? It uses something called SSL. Okay? SSL, it basically uses the HTTP protocol, but with SSL. SSL is a secure protocol that was designed. Um, there's open SSL, there's there's multiple ones. I, most most people most computer have most computers have open SSL installed. They use SSL. So instead of me saying instead of me connecting to connecting to the server and saying um, you know hi that's what the text said it'd be blah blah, blah. okay it'd, it'd be encrypted okay so it'd be like a weird language that only that only the computer and the server know. So when you connect, what I'll do is I'll, I'll say talk in Japanese. Or what, it won't be Japanese, but it'll be some weird binary code, okay? But talk in Japanese, I'll, I'll, I'll be the client, I'll be like, Google.com, and you'll be like, Japanese communication. Just say, Japanese communication. Okay, and I'll be like, Bleh! <laughs> and then you'll be like, Bleh! Yeah. So if you're packet sniffing, if you're, if you're, if you're, if somebody's connected in, in the middle of that connection, packet sniffing, which, which this school does because they want to see what people are going to, if you're packet sniffing, you can't see. Well, you can't when you get the when you packet sniff those packets. It's just gonna be blah, blah, blah. they're not gonna be able to read. It's not gonna be plain text. Get me? 
it would be encrypted. So it would just be baloney to them. They'll be like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay? So that's what it is. Then you have IRC, oh yeah, it's internet related chat. The default port is 6667. You also have post um, office protocol 3 secure. Once again, the transformation for um, pulling those emails will be over the SSL protocol. Make sense? You guys have all these all these protocols written down? You guys are awesome. Yep. More ports. Now we have TCP. Okay, TCP, transmission control protocol. That is what all these ports right here are. Did you guys write down TCP? Because I think that's what I had written up here. Yeah, most common TCP ports. TCP is transmission control protocol. That's the default um, network protocol. And then you have UDP. UDP is most likely used in real-time communications, okay? So you have 53. Now, when you're doing a DNS lookup, it will go... Uh, It will go um, to port 53 on UDP. Now, DNS is on both TCP and UDP, okay? But DNS queries, you know, when you request the, when you request the IP addresses, that gets sent over to UDP port 53 part, okay? And then you have DHCP, which, you know, I'm a big fan of because, hey, I don't want to sit at every computer and configure the IP addresses for each one to be able to work, in it, work correctly. So then you have... Um, DHCP goes over 67 and 68 on UDP. Then you have SMTP, um, SMMP, I mean. This is something to basically um, map your network with, okay? And then I have a video on ports for you guys to watch. You guys are going to sit down and watch this video because I took my time at home to make a video about ports because, you know, you know, I just took my time to work on it, to explain it deeper, okay? So let me know when you guys have all this written down and we'll get to the video, okay? Because it'll, it'll basically, it'll basically explain, explain the stuff that you need to know, you know? I'm, so, I'm sorry if I'm rushing. Am I rushing a little bit? It's probably because I want to get all this stuff in. Did you guys see Mrs. Aura smile on us? Was she? She was at the door looking in. And she smiled. I bet Nate's wanting to come in here and, you know... Give me one laptop back, clear it off, or, you know. Hey, you, you guys got a mail for me. We're the ones that pay the tax money for that computer. It's a school computer for students to use, right? Yeah. So he can't tell us if we can use it or not, you know? So she saw, she looked in the window. Yeah. When? When? Uh, a few minutes ago, when we were talking about ports. Really? You guys got this written down? Connor, are you, are you speed typing or what? Snapshot. Oh, you need a snapshot? She's in the office right across the, right across the way. Okay. So then we'll get to a video on ports. And um, what, what are ports? And if I ask you what are ports, are you going to you be able to tell me what is a port? You can tell me first. No, you're going to watch a video. Oh, okay. I thought you meant Then you tell me, right? Then, right. then you think you can? And guys, when you're when you're watching the video, it might not have it's not gonna have slides. It's gonna, it's gonna be me and with a whiteboard, okay? And if you guys hear background background noise, hey, it's a house. I don't have a door for my room. My parents, you know, it's just you know, it's chaos. Why don't they know? Why do you not? Let's just say I I got mad and I busted it down off the hinges, okay? Okay. <laughs> you guys got that written down? Yeah, I went I went Hawk Hogan on it. Okay, Vic's extra stuff, and then it should be in here somewhere. It should say Big Cost Networking Ports 1. Okay. Yeah. Can you guys hear it? Can you get, like, some speakers for this? Yeah, you do. Can you like get something to make it this a lot louder by like ten thousand? Yeah, it's on my shelf thing. But yeah, you can also see, hey, a whiteboard. What do you have a picture? Of 
Oh, well, it's like, it's, it's like a face. Um, oh, I don't know. My mom, my mom and dad just give me random pictures, and I'm like, okay, I'll hang it up on the wall. I would. Huh? I would. Well, you see, that? look at these random pictures on the wall. It's just something to look at. So how did your dad lose this? It's a long story. Let's just say... Um, when he was 20, he was there to jump onto a train, he jumped onto a bell, and the uh, wheel, you know. Wait, what did your dad try to do? Yeah. Dude, your dad used to be insane. Yeah, he used to be insane. He's like 20s, you know, early, going to bars, doing women, and doing there as a boyfriend, you know. What did he do? Off, jumped off the train, lost his life. Yeah. Uh-uh. How did your dad drive? I know. Uh, he has a left foot gas pedal. He, he had, like, this thing put in so he, he actually uses. Left leg for the gas pedal. Oh, he has his left leg. Well, he, I don't know. You guys are confusing me. He has one leg, and you know, he has a, he has a gas pedal for it. <laughs> it's like, it's like this metal thing that they screwed down to like a floorboard. Like, how does, I mean, does he have a wheelchair or something? Yeah, he has a wheelchair at the house. Yeah. And we're having our audio technician um, get the sound ready for us, thanks to um, Brandon. Right, Brandon? Thank you. He's he he he's good. He knows his stuff. He's good at his audio. He's a technician. Don't mess with him. <laughs> I'll reach here. Yeah. Make it. I'll reach your social security number for me. Give me Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Yeah. No. Now is it turned on? Is it woofed up? Hold on. Not turning. Power should be. Make sure it's all the way up. I don't want you guys to hear this stuff. Do you even know how to do something like that? What? Uh, just if I really want to, well, why, why would I, why would I want, why would I want to be doing that crap and get in trouble? Turn up. Close for the minute. Um. Uh, it sounds like it's coming, still coming out of the wake hole. Matrix. Matrix. Yeah. We don't need that on. We just need volume. Come on, technician. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can go to playback devices. Try that. No, right click on the icon, click playback devices. I don't think that's that. That's yeah, HDMI. Um, hey, look, we got a microphone that's being bugged, probably. Uh, here, let's, let's, huh. let me let me see what. Well, the microphone, it is going off. Holy dude. shit! What's this thing, man? Look how big that is. Um. One microphone. We need. No, we need, we need some headphones, okay? Because we're wasting time. It's green, but why did they work? I know it's a green one. Oh, that's why. Why? If I'm looking at the right... Don't tell me they, they screwed with our port so that we can't have audio. Is that, is that, that has to be an audio port. It is. It's a headphone or not? It looks like a mic symbol. It does? Just a little bit. Huh. But we had Watch it going. Cables. Remember we had it going last time? No, oh, it says headset. <laughs> you see nothing. Yeah, it shows a little microphone on that headset. Yeah, it's a headset. Oh, <laughs> what the hell? I don't know. That's where we had it last. Oh, maybe on the back. No? Oh, that's a little screw. Oh, wait. Is this all the way up, man? Yeah, dude. It's plugged, all plugged in, right? Is it I mean, there's no other plug like that, so... Oh, this is loose. There we go. Bingo. Say, turn it up. Communication. You, when you're communicating, you're connecting to a, a source IP address. Okay, you guys ready for this time? Yeah. Yep. Start at the beginning. 
Hello, my name is Victor Koss, and I'll be teaching you about ports, firewalls, and binding. First off, what is a port? Well, if you think about a computer, each computer is assigned an IP address, right? So this computer, say, has 10.6.5.27, okay? That's, his, that's this computer's IP address, okay? Well, when we connect, when we use networking to communicate, we don't just need an IP. Because if we just have the IP, where do we go from there? Ports tell us where we go from there. Ports are like protocols to services. So a web server. A web server uses port 80. So we'll have 80. So there's 80, okay? You have port 80. What you do is, on the client computer, you will connect to this IP address on port 80. When you connect to that, you will then have a communication and get a service. Makes sense? Everything on network communications transferred over a cat cable, here's the twisted pair, into packets. Each device on the network has an IP address to identify it and to allow communication. You, when you're communicating, you're connecting to a source IP address and then a destination IP address on a client. Say you're a client. This is your client right here. This is your laptop. Okay. Actually, no, let's use this for example. This right here. Here's your, yeah. Pretend this is a computer. This is your client. Okay. You are going to connect to the server over there. Okay. What you would need to do is basically connect to the IP address of that server. So your client. It has a source IP, and that's its IP address. The server, that would be your destination IP address. So you have, you always have source and destination. Okay? You always have where you start out at and where you want to go next. This is the basics networking. The source and destination. Okay? We can keep we'll be getting into this a little bit. Okay? So, your source, that would be your client in this case, right? Your destination, that would be your server. Okay? So your source has its own IP, which would be 10.6.5.27. Then your destination, we're going to pretend that server has 198.162.5.7. Okay, I don't know why I like 7 at the end. And it doesn't have a dot at the end. Okay? So if we look at this, it would be. So, everything on network, you have a source and destination. When I go to, web, when I go to a website, google.com, that's my destination. My source is that. You also have a source port and a destination port. What would be the destination port if I was going to Google? <coughs> 80. 80. 80. The destination port, we're going to get into this is a random port that your computer will bind to. We'll explain this. Source to destination. But that doesn't really tell you much. Just connecting to an IP address. Does that tell us anything? No. It doesn't tell me anything at all. So, this is where ports come in. Ports basically finish the destination. It tells us a little bit more.
like, we can know where somebody lives, but if we don't know how to get there, we're not going to get there. So let me go into this. I'm trying to explain Okay. So, when it comes down to ports, I believe you have 65,000 different ports. You guys remember the port range? So, from the what's the port range? Okay. But all communication, you need a source port and a destination port as well. So, same thing with ports. You got your IP addresses, right? Now you need your ports. But what about, what about on your client computer? Well, this is where something called a ephemeral port comes in. Okay? Ephemeral port is a temporary binded port for network communications on the client side. So, your computer will randomly pick, will randomly bind to an IP address, not an IP address, bind to a port that is not being used. So we'll use 6287. Okay? But that transformation will start over the HTTP protocol, the hypertext transfer protocol. So now you have communication between the two. You have your source IP. You have your destination IP. You have your source port. You have your destination port. You want to connect to that port 80. But you need a port to gather the data on. So you have 6287. Okay? So all communications must have a source and destination. When you when you are going to a website, you're connecting you're connecting to an IP address and a port. We have DNS, yeah. which will resolve really for this, a though. domain into an IP address. Most people think this is just for what? No, <laughs> this is for anything. You have host names, you have domains and applications such as IRC. You can resolve a domain to get an IP address, etc. DNS is another topic we can go into later. But you got to understand, there's always a source and destination. So, port. Think. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it, it is. I may help you, sir. Um, the destination port. I didn't catch it very fast. What exactly is this? Like where it arrives? Like what? Destination is what port are you are you are you gonna connect to? So on a website, if you type in Google.com, your web browser by default will will connect to port 80, unless you specify a different port. So destination port would be port 80. Now, source port would be the, the port that your computer binds to, to receive that data on. Okay? Any other questions? Or, we'll wait, we'll wait till the end and wrap it and then go over it all. Of your computer as having a bunch of holes in it, okay? Each one of these holes is a different number. And the range is like from 1 to 65,000. Am I correct? Anyway, it's on the slide about the official port range. You have TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, and you have UDP, User Datagram, user datagram Protocol. TCP is used for web, HTTP, and it's used for the most common stuff. Okay, guys? UDP, rarely ever used, but it's used for DNS, and it's really, really used for real-time communications, such as in a Skype call. You're connected to an IP address, you're, you're using a UDP, using the UDP protocol, and you're using a uh, port that Skype uses, I don't know what port Skype uses. But you have TCP and then you have UDP. Okay? So now, your computer has all these holes in them, okay? And those holes are for that IP address. Okay?
Noise so, is lost. You got 10, background noise, guys. 57, yeah. 5, yeah. 2. <laughs> what? That's your IP address on your computer. Okay. okay. Let's, let's pause this and let's, 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 let's go in a little bit. Okay. So, what, what do these holes represent, guys? Ports. Ports. Yep. And each one of those ports has a different number. Number. Yep. Then you have two different protocols for ports. What's that? TCP and UDP. What would you use UDP for? For uh, DNS and... And uh, real-time communications. Real -time. Anything that use, that's real-time. Examples. A Skype call. FaceTime. Make sense? Mm -hmm. TCP is the most common. It's used for stuff like web, IRC, um, SSH, etc. Okay? Even FTP. I'm guessing, uh, but it's, it's around there, okay? That's how many holes you have. So say you want to host a website on that. Well, the most common protocol used would be port 80. Okay. So you, you would you would do something called uh yeah. five I'm not yet. two Dude, or red dead or mom. Okay. So let's add colon out. Okay. So what is binding? Hey, sorry about the background interference. I don't have a door. Binding is basically listening to an address and or a port. Yes, you want bind this. And you bind something. It's basically what you're what you're basically holding on to, what you have mounted. So, if we use a notebook for example, and we want to bind to something. If you put 80 right there, okay? Imagine there's a big 80 right there. That's what we're listening to. That's what we're accepting communications on, okay? It's that port and that address. Okay? So, bind. So, let's go into this a little deeper. You have an IP address, and you need to have a port range, okay? Well, that port range exists for both protocols. So 65,000 something times two is actually how many ports you have available to use okay. for communications. So you have 65,000 ports, but that's the key protocol. Yeah. So, so you have these ports. Right here is your port 80, okay? So you have one port binded to, you cannot use it for any other applications that are, you know, running. What ports allow you to do is have multiple services running from there. If you just have an IP address, you can't really do anything if you don't have the port you're wanting to connect to. Makes sense? Because if you just connect to an IP address, it's like, well, what's it for? Is it just, is is that IP address just for a web server? You know, you, you need to know the port to open up that communication, to open up that socket, okay? So, what you have is you have port 80, okay? And then you have your then you have your laptop. Say you want to go to that. You want to go to that web server that's running off there, okay? Da -da -da -da. Okay? So there you go. You have your fancy, dancy, fancy, dancy computer, right? <laughs> yes. Okay? So what do you do next? Well, you're going to connect to this IP address at port 80 to receive that website. Now, since port 80 is registered port, and that's what default website HTTP transfer goes over, you don't have to type that into your web browser to specify the port, because when you type in a domain or an IP address, your web browser is, your web browser is going to know to connect to port 80, because that is the most common, that that's the default. that's the default, okay? Now you can bind your website to different ports, and we will get into this a little later. So, let's go into this on a different aspect. And actually guys, I will have another video if you actually, actually show me um, on my computer. I'm going to host a website on my computer, and I'm going to have my brother go to it on the, on the IP address. We're going to show you a little bit, okay? 
So that 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 that'll be really fun when when I get that running. Okay, guys. So I'll show you that to show you a real life example because I can't really show you at school because school uh, it's hell. So it's hell. Yeah. you have your computer. You're gonna connect to the IP address, and you don't have to type in port 80 because that's the default for HTTP transformation. So you're gonna go you connect to that. A port. And basically, you're connecting on that port on the IP address, okay? Your computer is binding to its own available port, a randomized port that you can bind to temporarily. It's temporarily. It's not actually, it's not actually listening on that port for accepting incoming communications. It's more of a, it's kind of like a loopback, so it can re receive that data and then append it, you know, be able to, yeah, accept that data and we need something to accept it on, basically, okay? So, you have a port 80, right? You have your computer over here, okay? It connects to that, right? It connects to that port, but needs something to receive that information on. So we will bind to say 77. So that computer says, oh, port 80, or, oh, this personal port 77 wants out on port 80, it's going to send it to that location and then your computer is going to be able to see it on port 77 and display the information you want. So that's why you have these ethernal ports or whatever they're called, you know, I don't really study how, how you pronounce stuff. But um, the temporary binding port, you won't be able to accept communications and data. You won't be able to do network communications if you do not have that kind of communication. See, of course they exist. You won't be able to allow to host multiple services on an IP address. You'd have to use different IP addresses for different things. And then you wouldn't know like what kind of service is being used or, you know, it's like, okay, port 80, um, what do we use that for? I mean, you know, it, it'd be extremely limited. That is why we have ports. We have ports for a variety of things. Ports are very important. Allows us to have multiple things. So, with this server work, we have um, port 80 being binded to. But we still have a lot more ports to mess with, right? Yes, we do. So, we're going to bind the port uh, SSH. Is it 22 and 21? Let me see. I get confused. Okay, it's 22. So we're going to bind to 22. So now we have port 80. That's running our website. That's what we have our Apache binded to and listening to for incoming communications. Then we're going to use port 22 for our SSH transformations. So having these ports allows multiple communications multiple services to be worked out. So this port 22 is what we're going to bind to next. We're going to use that for SSH. SSH is basically being able to remotely terminal into your server. What is a terminal? Well, think about a server. Usually servers run Linux, okay? Linux for the win. I like Linux, but I don't use it as my, for my computer. I use it for servers because Linux is very rock solid and it has more programming languages, etc. to be able to have more modules for things and also to run a better environment for hosting things. Linux is really good for that. So, Linux has a terminal, okay? A terminal is basically like, you guys know what a command prompt looks like, right? Well, that command prompt is DOS for Windows. This terminal is basically... Linux. It's basically it's its, it's backbone, um, the kernel, and all that other stuff. So you have this terminal where you can execute commands and be able to do things like mess with the file directory, um, install stuff, configure stuff by nanoing in, etc., like that. So that basically SSH will give us remote access to the server's terminal.
Okay. So we're going to have listening on port 22. Just write it down. Write the words that come out of that knob. No, but um, when I'm using SSH, you want to bind to a different port, so if somebody's port scanning you, um, 22 pops up there and be like, oh, we know what that is, let's go after it. So you always want to make it a little bit, you always want stuff like that, you want to change around, just to make it a little, you know, a little more different for um, hackers and stuff like that. But um, it really doesn't matter, just as long as you secure your SSH, you can get it out later if you want to. But now we have 80 and 22. If you go to your web browser and put an IP address and do colon, what does that colon mean? A colon means specify a port to connect to. Now we don't do this for 80 because web browsers automatically know defaultly use port 80, okay? Now, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard of HTTPS. That stands for basically HTTP transfer via SSL. SSL is secure socket layer. Basically, it's a type of communication over a protocol that encrypts the data. Okay, encrypts it. Basically, um, instead of instead of having the packet high being transferred, it's you know it's it's BQRT or something like that. You get me? Which makes it where people that packet sniff packet sniff which is um, basically stuff like Wireshark, um, TCP dump, etc. People that packet sniff, which you would probably call hackers, but people that are um, basically in the middle of your connection, man in the middle attack, if they packet sniff, they can get that information, basically. They can, they can see that information. It's right at them. Plain text. SSH, not SSH, HTTPS, is HTTP communication via SSL, which encrypts the data. So if they're not stopping, all they're going to see is a random mumbo jumbo that they're not going to be able to work with. That's all HTTPS is, really. You also have certificates and a lot of other baloney. We can, you know, not to, this is not the topic we're going over right now. But if you uh, want to have a secure website, you will bind your web server to another port called 4. Four, three. I believe four, that's what it is. Um, because, because see, I don't know all, all the all the ports off hand because you know I'm gonna mess around with them a lot. But I know all the comp. Do you know why we bind um, the HTTPS on port four four three? Because port eighty is um, what we were what we're using on the website to accept the unencrypted data transformation, right? But when we get to a, when we when we have a page say buy now page and we make that HTTPS, that has to be on a different port because you know that this port is not SSL. So on a port you need to have you need to have a port encrypted or unencrypted. It cannot be both. Make sense? So I want to put that down. That's why we have a different port for HTTPS communications. And yes, of course, with HTTPS as a default port that your web web browser will connect to and use. Ones because they're the ones I use, but you have port four four three. Okay, you'll have you'll have a different port for HTTPS for the SSL communications. Why? Because that that port is using a different protocol. Okay, you have to have a different port. You cannot do it over eighty because eighty is the clear text one. Eighty is the one the default one. You can't have both. It's either it's either an encrypted port or non encrypted port. Okay, makes sense there. So, most websites will have two ports being binded to, okay? But that's just a little skim of what that will be. That's a code right? Oh, yeah. So you have these ports that are being listened to. This is in. <laughs> these yes, ports allow multiple services to be hosted from one IP address. Now, if you have multiple IP addresses, then you can run two web servers off the same port, but you'd have to bind them to a different IP. One you put on one IP, the one you put on another IP, and then you'd have two websites that are binded on the same port, so the fault. There's something in the Apache called vhost. We actually have different, different um, sections. Um, so have different websites running on the same port and IP address.
I'll call Changing the batteries, guys. 